Hello guys, so welcome to this four part and today we are going to talk about memory. Yeah, we're going to talk about stack and we're going to talk about heap, right? So if you're a C++ programmer, you might know already what it is, but I give as assumption you know C++, so you, you know already a little bit about that, but we're going to have some extra knowledge in there because you're going to manipulate these things directly in assembly. So we, it's better to know it, right? So I might gloss about some details. If you have questions, ask in the comment. But again, I give assumption that you already know what it is. So it's just a refresher, right? So when your program start, the operating system reserves some memory for you in RAM, right? And basically tell you, okay, that's where your program is going to run. Uh, you have the stack space and extra stuff. And the, the stack is a limited resource. So we can imagine that as a rectangle, right? With a start and an end. Let's say it starts on the bottom. I actually don't remember if it grows ver upwards or downwards, but let's say it's in grow upwards. So that's the start of your stack. This is the end. So several things when your program runs will happen. So first of all, the operating system is going to load the code. So the machine instruction on the stack, and this is called the code segment, right? Then you have the data segment, right? So here, all the constants and uh, static values go here. And then you get a base pointer, right? So let's call it a base pointer to where you can start use the memory. So this is a scratch pad for you. You can add values on that uh, in assembly and everything, but normally, if you're in C++, you don't manipulate that yourself. What happens is usually every value that the compiler knows about at compile time, it knows the size, it knows what it is, it usually goes on the stack. For example, let's say you have a function. Ah, sorry, let's, let's write it better. So void, fun, right? Curly brace it, whatever. I should probably do it here. And then you say int i equals zero. I don't know why it wrote 66 there, but it's gonna stay there, right? So you might wonder, mm, where where is this value? This integer, so let's say it's integer is 32 bit, wh where it is? That's on the stack, right? So when the function get called, and more about that later, i is going to be stored here, right? So i equals 0. So you're going to get 32-bit zeroed out here. If you have another one, int j equal to 1, that's going to be here, j, right? And when your function terminates, this memory is going to be automatically freed, right? Like that. So you might say that the stack is managed for you, right? So if you allocate stuff on the stack, you're good to go. And that happens the same with classes and stuff. That's good. But you might heard about, about new malloc and stuff when this is used when the compiler basically doesn't know how much memory is going to allocate, right? So let's say the function has an argument n, right? And we need to do to allocate an array of n elements, right? To do something. Right? We cannot know that at compile time. We don't know what n is. The compiler doesn't know it. It cannot reserve on the stack the memory we need, right? n. We, we can't. We, we don't know that. We're not magicians. So what you do, you need to allocate that on the heap, right? So basically at runtime, you go to the operating system and say, please, can you reserve somewhere, I don't care where, that much memory, which can be like n times 32 bit. Right, which then n a runtime might be hundreds, right, and so on. So you say, please reserve that much memory. So the the operating system is going to see in RAM. Okay, I can put you here. You have free memory, so it's going to reserve, and it's gonna give you that memory for you. It's gonna give you a pointer to the memory. So let's say your memory starts here. So you know that from that pointer on, 
uh, up to the size you ask for and time 32 for example that memory is yours you can do whatever you want there but you are on your own if you return from the function you don't free the memory that memory is gonna stay there and that's called a memory leak and every C++ and C programmer knows about it so that's the main difference between the stack and and the heap right so we talked about that the stack is limited so it's a fixed size you can ask for more stack if you want to uh, when, when your program start but if you start to add too much stuff on the stack you um, you you overflow you get stack overflow not the website which is the same name but you get an overflow in memory now you might had a hint that basically function call and stack there is a relationship and we're going to talk about that better in the next video but for now let's just say that when you call a function some memory is going to be allocated for that function let's say f call and when you have recursive function right f call f you're going to allocate another chunk of memory another chunk another chunk and that's why you have an unstopped recursion or a recursion too deep you get stack overflow because the more function call you do without returning you're going to eat up the stack until you overflow but we're going to talk about the details of this later right uh, in the next video actually uh, when we are going to call about calling convention and we're going to know exactly how much memory is going to be used and so on all right so that's it for this video guys in the next one as promised we're going to talk about calling convention and then we might be ready to go and actually have a look at some assembly code and see what i'm doing there okay so see ya in the next video guys